So Advanced Creative Deal Structuring with Bill Cook, uh, hosted by Advanta IRA today. We're very grateful to have Bill with us. My name is Alex Perney. I will be the moderator. Uh, if you have any questions regarding uh, anything that you've heard in a with regards to doing these types of deals through retirement plans, or if you need any help with self-directed IRAs, please feel free to give me a call. My number is directly on there. If you have questions for Bill, his phone number and website are right up there. So if you have any questions about the events that he has coming up or want to get in touch with him, uh, his website has a bunch of great information and resources on it as well. Quick disclaimer, uh, Advanta IRA and our employees do not provide investment or legal advice, nor do we endorse or promote any investment products. All informational materials are for educational purposes only, and all parties are encouraged to consult with their attorneys, accounts, and financial advisors before entering into any type of investment. Now, a little bit about us here at Advanta. Uh, we are a self-directed IRA a retirement plan administrator serving clients nation and indeed worldwide as well. Uh, our main goal is to provide excellent customer service and bring you the knowledge that you need in order to make informed decisions, which is why we have great pre presentations like this with great guests like Bill Cook. Uh, we've been in business for uh, almost 20, 20 years in our industry. Uh, we maintain a, a fantastic staff of certified IRA services professionals. Um, we maintain uh, security on all of our over 8,000 accounts to standard banking practices. We have uh, almost $1.8 billion of assets under administration, which is a, a point that we are very proud of. We have seen a, a prodigious growth in our clients' uh, assets, as well as uh, the values of those assets as well. And again, here at Advanta, we pride ourselves on providing that excellent customer service. So uh, every IRA client has a dedicated IRA account manager. So if you ever have any questions, you don't have to call through a phone bank like you do with other people. You're not gonna get someone different every time. Uh, you get to talk to one single person and build that great relationship. And again, one thing that Bill's gonna probably touch on today is the importance of relationships and making deals work. Uh, that is a uh, kind of a key to a lot of things that we do in life and in business. And, and indeed, that does hold true for this type of thing as well. So uh, we'd like to make sure that we extend that to our clients. And again, that's, you know, you're not paying for any different level of service or anything else. That's uh, something we offer directly to every single client. Great slide. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Bill. I'll let him uh, give a little bit of uh, intro to himself. And uh, before I just finally hand that over, I just also, again want to keep uh, encouraging people ask questions. I've known Bill for, for quite a long time, and he is always happy to answer questions. Does a great job at kind of digging in there, and uh, it can take us into some really great places that otherwise just the uh, standard presentation may not go. So please do ask your questions. Again, you are muted, so type those into the chat box. I will be moderating the chat box and asking those. Uh, to Bill as they come up. So with that said, Bill, take it away. Thanks very much for being with us today. Oh, I much appreciate it. I greatly appreciate your help on this, Alex. And what a lot of y'all don't know is behind the scenes, Alex has been helping me use all the tech stuff. So right now, my wife and I, we live in a motor home, so we travel around the country. So right now we're in Kansas in an RV park using a contraption for a signal. So it's pretty neat. So Alex, thank you very much for your patience. Greatly appreciate it. My pleasure. Yeah, as far as about uh, Kim and me, Kim and I are a husband and wife team. And what we're talking about today will be uh, advanced creative deal structuring. And I'm using it in terms of how do I use IRAs, our IRAs, how do they get involved when I'm doing something in advance and exactly what is advanced creative deal structuring? So first thing is you see there my phone number. I don't coach, I don't mentor but you're always welcome to give me a phone call. So if you're working on a deal and you're unsure what to do or, you know, how can I structure this, feel free to give me a phone call. Because again, I spend a lot of my time driving across the country and I'm more than happy to help. So my phone number is 770-815-8727. Uh, know my background, I did my very first creative deal in 1990, I was 30 years old. And it was in Shreveport, Louisiana. And so that means I've been doing deals, I guess, for 31 years now. Doesn't seem that long, but it is. And my business was built square on the back of knocking on homeowners' doors. So I'm a door knocker. Uh, I've, I've made my living since I was 12 years old knocking on homeowners' doors and being invited in. A uh, good example is when I was in, to put myself through college, I sold electronics vacuum cleaners door to door. And then when I graduated, I stayed with them for a total of 18 years because I could make a lot more money with them than I could with Procter & Gamble. Um, so that's what I did. And when I switched over to real estate, 
I just kept doing door knocking because it was just, to me, it's the most effective way to get face to face with sellers and make your written offers. Um, we don't work a very big area. We have a five mile circle around the Cartersville, Georgia Walmart. So that's it. That's where all our properties are. That's where all our deals have been done. Uh, I've done lending outside of that area, but meaning me owning a house, I want everything in one area, very tight, one county courthouse, one electrician, one contractor, one plumber, one roofer, kept things very simple. Our portfolio consists of single family rentals, a small mobile home park, notes, options, and we really won't have time to talk about options today, but a lot of what I've done with IRAs involved options. I've done lending, but I've done a lot of work with options, and a lot of options are held by uh, my IRA. Uh, and then we also have some stock. And we have uh, we do have an account with Advanta, and I'm, I I really do enjoy working with Advanta because you're dealing with one person instead of I've been with a couple other uh, custodians. And it, I'm talking to a different person each time, and when I'm trying to get something done, and some of the stuff I do, do is pretty creative, I need to be able to have built a relationship with somebody. And with Advanta, I'm able to do that. So when you're dealing with someone like an Alex, he's able to help. And I have down here that I love Larissa because I've known her for about seven years. And um, uh, the, uh, one of the main reasons I'm with Advanta is because of Larissa. So I'm great. I'm grateful for her. And I'm trying to click a slide. There it is. And you heard Alex say this. Feel free to ask questions through this. When I go to a seminar, I like it when it's a question and answer session versus just, you know, they tell you to wait till the very end to ask your questions because by that time I usually have forgotten my questions. So feel free to ask your questions anytime along the way and I'll do my best to take, you know, take care of it and get it answered. And Alex, you can click the slide over for me because evidently I'm not clicking. It, it just, uh, with, with regard to the mouse thing, it has to like do a handoff. I just uh, checked to make sure the sound is working someone so they couldn't hear anything. Uh, but it's probably just an issue on their end as I everything's working on mine. So you should have full control now. Got it. Okay. So the, the, the when it comes down to creative deal structuring, there's something I want to make sure folks know. You know, deal structuring, real estate investing, it's not a born knowing how to do a thing. It's a learned thing. And I was blessed by having three really great teachers. I think they're the best teachers in the country. And that was in Jack Miller and Pete Fortunato. They taught me the offense. You know, that was their main job was to teach me how to go out and do deals. And also I had Dyke Spotiford and he was in charge of my defense, you know, my entity structures and what do I do to protect what, what I've gotten. But between Jack and Pete and Dykes, I would not be here. Kim and I would not be here without those three men. So I found Dykes in 97. And then he told me about Jack Miller. I think I did my first Jack class in 1998. And I met Pete at that class again, the 1998. So just know that deal structuring really is its own language. And you have to learn that language. You don't, if you're just making a, you know, going out making 50 and 60 cent on the dollar offer deals, there's really no structuring and there's no creativity involved in that. You're just using the big damn hammer on every deal that comes across. But in using the big damn hammer for everything, you're walking by a lot of deals that could have been done that you're just missing. People always say it's too competitive out there. And it really isn't if you know how to put things together. So when we talk about subject or creative deal structuring, a lot of people have heard the phrases and used um, structures like subject to deals or owner carry or land trust or pure options. And when I say a pure option, most people know the phrase lease option as if it's one word. It really isn't. There's two different documents. One is a lease and one is an option. So the lease gives someone use of the property. They can go in and live in it. And an option gives them the right the right to buy it at some point in the future. And a lot of times I'm doing option work without a lease being involved. Um, anyway, so with <coughs> advanced deal structuring, the way I really refer to this is structure stacking. What makes it advanced is I'm not just doing a subject to deal or I'm not just doing an owner carry uh, purchase. 
I'm using a number of the different deal structuring tools in our deal structuring toolbox to make a single deal work. And again, the phrase I have for that is uh, structure stacking. And the most important lesson I ever learned as a real estate investor, I'm, not a, I'm sorry, not as an investor, but as a person, came when I was 19 years old. So I told you all, I was selling vacuums door to door to put myself through, through college. And I'm not a salesman. I, I, I understand service, but I don't understand sales. I was never the guy that could go out and sell ice to an Eskimo or anywhere close to that. I knew people who could. I'd been out in the field with them and watched them, and they were just absolutely amazing. But that wasn't my cadence. That's not that's not the drummer I marched to. Mine was always about service. So anyway, when I was going into my sophomore year in college, I was having a really tough time that summer getting enough sales. I was behind on my, my numbers, and it looked like I was going to have to drop out of college. And my mother brought me home a book called See You at the Top. It was written by Zig Ziglar. And in going through that book, I saw he used a phrase that changed everything in my life, not just with Electrolux, not just real estate, but my life in general. And the phrase was, you'll get exactly what you want in life if you just help enough other people get what they want. In other words, it's about them, not you. And when you approach life that way, just through the law of attraction, it just stuff comes your way. When you're there to help, when you need stuff, it comes your way. And I can't explain how and why it works. It just does. So let's kind of look at, there it goes. I'm going to give you an example you can go look at on your own about structure stacking. So we put up a video on our website and it's the featured video. Uh, if you see so my website is billingkimcook.com. If you go there, you'll be able to see it. And there were 10 different creative deal structuring tools that were used to make the single deal work. Now, I'm not gonna go into that deal during this program because it would take too long. But if you go watch the video, I'm able to go into more detail and I've been asked to do a second video on that, which explains, because I, I just talked about using the tools and why I had to, but I'm going to do a second video as a follow-up, why those particular tools, what did those tools do to make that deal work? But the tools involved were a land trust, a deed into trust, a master lease, a pure option, a residential lease, a subject to deal, owner carry financing, and then three mortgages were used to secure um, the promises that were made. So one, one promise was a master lease. One promise was a pure option. One a promise was the owner carry financing. So I used three different mortgages to secure those three different promises. So I want you to see that when you look at this, you're like, wow, you know, th that's a lot. But again, it's just a language. It's like learning Chinese. Right now I'm learning Spanish. and in learning Spanish, I'm using something called Duolingo, and I think I've now like done 107 days in a row. But when I first started Duolingo, I couldn't really speak hardly any Spanish whatsoever. I understood it okay, but speaking it was hard. And this is the funny thing about Spanish. It was my first language. So I wasn't born in America. I was born in Barranquilla, Colombia, South America. And then we moved to Ticasati, Guatemala. So my first language was, was Spanish. My dad was, uh, he worked he, he worked in the military. I'm an army brat. And then we moved from there to Thailand. And when I was in Thailand, I learned Thai. So I could speak Spanish and Thai. And I didn't learn English till I was about six or seven years old when we moved back to the States. But now I'm telling you, I'm trying to relearn Spanish, though I was fluent at one point in my life because I did not use the language, I lost the language. So in learning the language of creative deal structuring, not only do you have to learn it, you have to stay immersed in it. You have to stay around it. And that keeps your vocabulary strong. That keeps you able to know how to structure deals and what you should do when. Okay, so let's kind of, again, as we're talking about creative deal structuring, and we're about to go into some real world deals. But as we're talking about creative deal structuring, I want you to understand it really is simple, but it's not easy. And investors confuse the two. You know, there's there's nothing about investing this easy. It requires a lot of work. 
you know, when I would door knock, um, I was making 25 written offers a week. That, that was my goal. That was it. That was a holy grail. Everything was about 25 written offers a week, and I did it through door knocking. And so I knocked on the first door on Monday at 9 a.m. I used to do Electrolux the same way. But I knocked on the first door at 9 a.m., and I would continue door knocking until 30 minutes before sunset. And then the next day, I picked up at the next door at 9 a.m., and I kept doing that until I reached 25 written offers. And you know, a lot of some of you know me and maybe even been out door knocking with me. But when I door knock, one of the things that will happen is um, eight out of 10 sellers will invite me in. And over decades, I've taken out groups of investors door knocking with me. And in doing that, I tell people before we head out, eight out of 10 sellers will invite us in. And sometimes I have 30, 40, 50 people with me. And I'm in a place I've never been before. And they're like, you know, that might work in Georgia, but that won't work in California or that won't work in New York. And it does. So the point I'm trying to get to, door knocking is not easy. It's a simple thing, but it's just not easy. And so, you know, there's never been a day in my life. Again, I've done this for a living since I was 12, but I've never woken up a day in my life. And I thought, oh, good. Aren't I lucky? I get to go knock on people's doors today. It's just what had to be done in order to achieve the goals I set my, for myself. So same thing with you. I'm not telling you to become a door knocker. What I'm saying is get the offers out there however you do it. And if what you're doing is not working, switch. So and again, I use door knocking because I could go make 25 written offers a week and usually had that done within three days that week. And then after that, I would go do other things like work on the horse ranch or meet with other investors or go to a seminar or whatever else. And Real estate in general, not just creative deal structuring, is about caring about people. And you're about to see an example of a deal like that. And so in caring, it means I'm asking questions. I'm being very curious. So if you were ever in a house with me, you would be dumbfounded by the number of questions I ask. And rarely do I make statements. And almost never do I talk about myself because it's not about me, going back to Zig. It's about them. i got to find out what they want. And then I got to find the tools to use to make that happen for them. And people ask me, how, how do you know how to structure the deal? And the answer is going to surprise you. The homeowner, the seller, tells me how to do it. And maybe I'm the seller and maybe it's the buyer. The buyer tells me how to do it. Or maybe I'm the lender, so the borrower tells me how to do it. Or maybe I'm the borrower. The lender tells me how to do it. So they tell me what I need. And my job is to have the creativity, the the curiosity and care enough to make the thing work. And really, my whole world has always revolved around lots and lots and lots of questions and listening. So always remember, when it comes to real estate, it's not about them. I mean, it's only about them. It's never about you. So if you're feeling you need to build rapport by talking about yourself, please don't. It's, it's going to be a waste of time. So now let's kind of look at some deals. Now, who you're looking at there is Laura Dressman. And let me tell you about Laura. I think the absolute world of her. She's a college student. I've been trying to get her to drop out of school because she's such a good investor and a good lender, but she, will, she refuses to drop out of college. I just think it's a waste of her time. But her parents disagree. She disagrees. And something about having the college degree is important to her. But um, Laura Dressman, I know her and I trust her. And I, I, she's a second generation, so I know her dad. Um, and her dad, his name is Bob Dressman, a really good investor, smart guy, knows his stuff, um, fun to be around, uh, just smart guy. And in, oh, by the way, I have an interview of Bob up on our website. And it's about these interviews I've done with a number of investors is about, you know, they're 45 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes long. But I'm asking them how they got started. And what I really want to know about these successful investors is what do they do to succeed? In other words, they hit the rock, they would hit the brick wall at some point in their career a number of times, yet they didn't quit. What kept them going? And so that's what I kind of dig at during the interview. So you might want to go listen to Bob's interview. So here's the deal with Laura Dressman. And feel free to ask any questions as I go through this. So I knew Laura 
we had spent some time together and she called me on the phone one day and she said that someone who wanted to flip a condominium, this was up in uh, Ohio, uh, needed $52,000 to be able to buy this condo and they didn't have the 52,000. And they were willing to pay 15, when I say 15 and 5, it means 15% interest and 5 points. And a point is 1% of the loan. So in this case, 1 point is $520. 5 points will be 5 times 520 bucks. So that's what the investor was willing to do. And Laura uh, wanted to make this loan. Her problem was she was 19 years old and she only had $5,000 in her Roth account. Now, this is important to everybody on this call This that has an Avana account or any IRA account. I find so many people, you know, they won't get out there and even try to do a deal or loan their money out because they feel they don't have you know, three or $400,000 in their IRA. Well, that's crazy. So I want you to see what Laura did with just $5,000 in our IRA. So someone needed 52 and she had five. So Laura called me on the phone and when she called, she said, hey, listen, you know, she told me about the overall deal, said she had five, and she said, I need to get $47,000. And now this is where the negotiation came in. She said, I need to get $47,000. And I said, how much do you need to get the $47,000? She said, oh, a lot. And I said, how much is a lot? And she had already told me she's getting 15 and five. So what you're looking at here, this would be called a wrapping deal. And I'll go into the definition of a wrap as we get to the end of this uh, slide. So the, the investor is willing to pay 15 and 5, and she was willing to pay me th uh, 13 and 3. So 13% and 3 points. And on, on, on the uh, $47,000, I was lending. Now, this may shock some people that are out there, but understand that if you have an IRA, and you don't have a lot of money in there, there are investors around you, um, the, the ones with gray hair and bald heads. They want to see you do well if you'll go out and work. If you're someone that, that doesn't want to sit there and be like a baby bird fed, you know, you know, fed by mama bird all the time, and all you do is sit there and go, ah, 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 you know, feed me, feed me, feed me. Investors my age don't like people like that. But if someone like Laura will go out and bust their butt and get something done, we take great interest in that person and we want to see them succeed and we'll help them work. So when Laura told me that she would pay me 13 and three, I said, well, that's a very fair proposition. I said, but that doesn't work for me. So she paused and she said, well, Bill, then I can do 14 and four. And I said, well, Laura, that is a really great, great offer to me and I appreciate it, but you're going the wrong way. And there was just another long pause. And she said, okay, 12 and two, will you go 12% and two points? I said, you know, I like the two. That has a good ring to it, so the two points. But the 12, I don't know, I don't like that very much either. And she said, would you go 11%? I said, no, you're getting warm, but I, I don't think I want 11% either. And so we negotiated where I agreed to accept 10% and two points. So my question to you is, why did I do that? Why did I agree? She was willing to pay me 13 and three, and the money's coming from my uh, Advanta IRA account, my 401k. So why did why 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 did this deal happen? Why did I go 10 and two? And the answer is, I wanted to see her succeed. You know, Kim and I have done very very well in our lives, and we don't have to. As my wife came up with a great saying, we don't have to take all the slick off the table. We want to see other people do well too. And at 19, I want to see Laura do well. So I agreed to loan $47,000 at 10 and 2. And I think that afternoon I was talking to a friend of mine named Chris. And Chris, and just in talking to me, I told him about this deal. He knows who Laura is and said, that's great. He said, but wait a minute. I've got a little IRA sitting here with $14,100 in it, and it's not doing anything. Can I get it? Can I get in on this deal? And to me, the more my friends that are in on a deal, the better it is. So I was like, well, absolutely. So instead of me coming up with a full $47,000, Chris put in $14,100. So he was in uh, first position. And he was getting 10% two point, and two points on that loan. I was in second position. 
and my loan was 33,800, 10 percent, two points. And then Laura came in, and on her note, it was for 55,295. So in other words, the note the investors gave Laura was 55,295 because they only needed 52, but the five points was rolled into the note and some other expenses too, but so it brought the note up to 55,295. So Laura is getting paid 15% and five points based on a $55,295 loan. So good for her. From that, she's paying me based on my uh, $33,000 note, and she's paying my friend Chris based on his $14,000 note. So the investor who borrowed the money is sending one check to Laura based on the loan to Laura, and then from that money, Chris and I are being paid. So in other words, within the bounds of Laura's note, her wrapping note, sits my my note and Chris's note. So that's how you come up with the phrase wrapping. So think of Laura's note, which is in third position, wrapping around the second position note that I hold and the first position note that Chris holds. And that's wrapping. So Laura is really supersizing her $5,000 IRA I was able to make this deal work, building future relationships with this investor so there'll be more deals to be done with this investor when this deal gets finished. So that is a great way, if you have a little bit of money in an IRA, to get a deal like this done. So again, me just talking like this, if you have questions, please ask them. I'm all ears, type them into the chat room. And uh, Alex will come back to me and tell me what the thing is. I'm more than happy to answer questions. Yeah, and I definitely want to parrot that. Um, you know, we don't have any uh, questions in there thus far. Uh, you know, even if it's maybe something, uh, you know, tangentially related to what he's talking about, you know, get it in there because, you know, I've, as long as I've been listening to Bill speak, he can always tie it back into a uh, coherent point related to the, um, the presentation. I see someone just raise their hand. Uh, just type into the chat box if you have a question. Um, just go ahead and fire it in there. I am monitoring all those. So if you have a question. Um, okay, here, here's a good one. Uh, so uh, Paul asks, uh, why a solo one, why a solo 401k and not a Roth IRA? Okay, and that's a really good question because I have Roth IRAs. But when they came out with a solo 401k, I liked it much better. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is a friend of mine named Dorsey Botterford, Dykes Botterford's daughter, wrote a great book on solo 401ks. You know, why would you want this over an IRA? So if you go to assets101.com, you'll find her book. And I know that Dorsey has an account with Advanta also. But anyway, the the main reason why I like the solo 401k, because I don't, I don't have checkbook control of my IRAs. I just don't want to do that. So Advanta does that for me. But what I like most about it is with a Roth IRA, if you do a prohibited transaction, so this is gonna be a this is gonna be a safety thing for me, but if you do a prohibited transaction, doesn't matter whether you mean to or not, I'm very careful with my old age pension money. But let's say I I did a transaction for some reason the IRS came along and said prohibited, then from the moment I did that deal, my IRA ceased to be an IRA, it stopped and it opened up, which meant I owed taxes on all future deals I did. So let's say they come back to me four or five years later and say that deal you did four or five years ago was prohibited. Well, then all the deals I've done since then, I should have paid tax on, tax on and I didn't. So with the interest and penalties, it will kill you. But with a solo 401k, and this is the reason I most love solo 401ks. If I do a prohibited transaction, it doesn't open up the entire account. It just means on that one deal that I did that was prohibited, I will owe interest and penalties on just it. And that to me is the main reason I can I, I, I can do this. And I would love to tell you, you can take your, your Roth IRA and switch it into a solo 401k and you cannot. I wish I could, but you cannot. So I had to open up solo 401ks and we you know, funded them. And that's what I use now. I still have a Roth IRAs. I still have to put them to work. But if I have a choice, if they ever gave me the ability just to make everything a solo 401k, I would do that. 
an advantage that's really good about working with people with that. Any other questions? Yeah, yeah and just to kind of uh, piggyback on at the end of that, you can have a, a Roth 401k. Uh, so if, if a Roth is really, you know, particular interest to you or anyone else out there, uh, even though you can't take your Roth IRA and roll it into a Roth 401k, uh, you can have a after-tax 401k, so you can have a Roth 401k, not a problem. So I uh, just keep that in mind. Um, let's wait, wait, see. Hey, you said that, Alex. Yeah. Thank you for telling me that, Alex, because again, what I have is called a solo 401k with a Roth component. So that is what I'm using. So thank you for uh, point, uh, clearing that up for me. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we got some uh, other questions rolling in. Uh, so we took care of that one. Uh, let's just see. While you're reading that, I want you all to know that I just got a text from Pete Fortunato, who's listening to this. So I thought that was pretty great. But anyway, he wanted me to point out, I was talking about curiosity and helping people. It's about them, not you. And the text he sent me is, the relationship is the most valuable component of any deal. And he's absolutely right. So it's about relationships. So thank you, Pete. Absolutely. So uh, just a couple, oh, we got them rolling in now. Uh, okay, so uh, so is that a self-directed solo 401k? Yes, it is self-directed. Uh, solo 401k is also tax-free earnings. Yes, that is correct. Uh, okay, now let's get into some uh, questions about the deal. And we got a couple of those easy ones out of the way. Uh, so we have a question. Why were you in second position, even though your loan was a higher amount? Because um, I don't want to confuse y'all. As we're talking about a wraps, to make sure everybody understands, I just put my friend Chris. It doesn't matter who has the most money. I could have been in first. Chris could have been in second. It's just when did it get recorded? And so for those of you that are advanced, that, that are experienced, here's what we really did. I formed something called a paper trust. And in the paper trust, you have Chris, he owns a percentage of the paper trust, and I own a percentage of the paper trust according to the amount of money we have in it. That's the percentage split. And so actually the paper trust is in first position, Laura's in second position. But if you're if you don't know what a wrap is, what I just said absolutely loses you. And so I didn't want to do it that way. So if it makes you feel better in the explanation that my 40, my 40, my uh, 38, 33,800 is in first position and Chris's 14, one is in second position and Laura's in third, then write it up that way. Great. Uh, let's see. Um, how do you structure pure options and leash options in the IRA? I don't know if you want to touch on that. It's probably so that's a real deep question. But if you want to maybe give like a 30,000 foot view of that one. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Keep it way up there. So anyway, with with pure options, and I'll give you a good example of a pure option. Um, last year, when COVID started, there was a my little bank in Adairsville. Um, the banker called me up and said there was a man, one of his customers, who was a very good customer, wanted, who was supposed to get a loan to go buy a boat, a ski boat. And I think the boat was going to be about eighteen, nineteen thousand dollars $19,000. This man had a good job, owned the job for 20 some odd years. It was one of the carpet mills up there. And because of COVID, this man had been laid off. Because he had been laid off, though he was well financial, had a great credit score, making all his payments, everything great, the bank could no longer make the, the, the loan to him on a boat. And so I've, I have a lot of business relationship with this banker. We've done a lot of deals together like this. And he doesn't want to lose this customer. And he wants to make sure the customer is taken care of, though he can't do it. So what I did is I went and met with this man. And again, he wanted the, like $18,000, $19,000 for a boat. And so what he agreed to do is sell me an option to buy his property one day in the future. Now, I'm not going to get into all the details behind that about the split and who's gonna make what. But anyway, I just, I had the right to buy his house and in exchange for the right to buy his house, I gave him a boat. So an option with it, doing it this way, it's not a loan. In other words, Dot Frank doesn't come into it because I bought an option, I didn't give him money. I bought an option on his property. With in the, I can give him money or a boat, but it's, it's in exchange for me purchasing something from him, which was the right to buy his house at some point in the future. And then I went door knocking, uh, and as later that day, I found a nice ski boat for sale. It, no for sale sign on it, but it was. I just knocked on the door and said, I heard you might be trying to sell your boat, and they were. And that person agreed to sell me a very nice ski boat for $3,000. 
And so the deal, the way it worked out was the owner of the property gave me an option to buy his house sometime in the future. In exchange, I gave him a boat, a nice, nice ski boat that he valued at about $20,000 that out of my pocket, my IRA, was only $3,000. And I will hold that option probably for about 20 or 25 years. So that's an example of a pure option without any type of lease being involved. And when most of my option work in the, that, that we do, the person doesn't want to sell their house. That's when it works best. They want to keep their house and using a pure option allows them to keep their house not have the risk of a loan, meaning interest and payments and penalty and repayment of a loan. With an option, once that option is done, they don't owe me anything back other than the right to buy their house at some point in the future. And I hope that answers that question. And so, you know, I'll be teaching an, up here, uh, an options course next year, and it's going to be detailed. And also, we also be covering pure options at Webbox. That's a course Pete and I will teach in uh, September. Awesome. Thank you very much for that. Uh, let's see. We got kind of, uh, let's do another couple of questions on this one that we can go into the next deal. Uh, so uh, let's see. Michelle asks, it seems like someone willing to pay 15% out of state might be doing a risky deal. How did you protect your investment, particularly because it seems if you had to take the property, it would be in your 401k and out of state. And then to follow up on that, uh, how often do you wait, wait, get wait, wait, on wait, 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 before we go into that, let's cover that first, okay? And then well, answer the second part. It's yeah, it's just it, all, it basically just goes farther into what happens with a default. Okay, so let, let's say the investor did not fulfill their promise and defaulted where it probably had to be foreclosed on. A couple of things here. First of all, I told you that I trust Laura. I think the world of Laura. I know her dad. Her dad is a phenomenal investor. I remind you to go to my website and watch the interview on Bob. See what kind of man he is. So I loan to people. I mean, the collateral is very important, but the people I work with are very, very important to me. And as far as foreclosing from my IRA, I wouldn't have done that. What I would have done is sold the note to another friend who, in other words, I would have taken the note out of my IRA. I would have had cash go in for selling the note, and I would let them go do the foreclosure. Because I don't want to, I'm one that I don't own rental property in my retirement accounts. I don't want to foreclose from my retirement accounts. I want to keep property out. I'm not saying that's the right way to do it. I know a lot of my friends that do have properties in their IRAs and they're doing great. It's just not something I do. Great, great. I think that kind of hammered both of those uh, questions. And then um, one, pretty much the last question we can get into the next deal. Uh, door knocking in COVID. Have, what have you done adjustment wise? Have things changed over the past year? Uh, maybe we should nothing, uh, elaborate a nothing, little bit on that. That's always some of the best. Nothing. Back nothing. Like. Nothing changed. And if you live in New York or California, you're like, oh my God. Um, I had a friend of mine. His name is uh, Glenn Hartman, and you know he goes to Pete's McDonald's. Pete lives, you know, near Beach, and he's been going to the same McDonald's since like 1984. Every every morning, 8 to 8 a.m., there's Pete. So Kim and I move our motorhome down to Largo, Florida for the winter, and every morning I go to Peace McDonald's because why would you not? But anyway, my friend uh, Glenn Hartman, that was earlier this year, um, was wanting to get an RV. So we went out door knocking because when I would need to get anything, whatever it is, I just go door knock. And we, the very first house we stopped at, there was an RV sitting in the driveway. And so I said, let me out here. He said, well, it's not for sale. I said, just let me out. Because when you're door knock, you're going to be shocked at the number of boats that are for sale, RVs for sale, motorcycles for sale, cars for sale, whatever you see in the driveway is for sale. It's amazing, the number. Anyway, I knocked on the man's door, and um, I said, you know, this is going to sound crazy, but a friend of mine said someone in this neighborhood had an RV, and they're thinking about selling, selling it. Is this that RV? And he said, yeah. How did you hear about that? So I'm going to cut to the chase. It turns out, you know, he we, we he showed us the RV. You know, Glenn was with me, so we got out and we saw the RV. It was very nice. He agreed to sell it to us, gave us a really great price, but everything was done right there in probably about 30 minutes in his garage. So no mass, no, and I've door knocked this, for the last year and a half for me, just me going out when I need to stop and find out about something. And no one, not one person has ever said, where's your mask and COVID and all this kind of stuff. It's just not what happened. So that's how I've handled COVID. 
Great. I think that uh, pretty much actually uh, one question just on the numbers of this one, we can move on. Um, so, so my math is correct, Laura's deal. Uh, first position, 14,100. Second, 38,800. Laura's 5,000, uh, which equals 52.9. No, 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 not 5,000. Laura had $5,000. The note to Laura was 55,295. That was her note. So the mistake people make is they don't read the language. So Laura's note, this in third position has wrapping language in it. So when we talked about wrapping, I told you about Dorsey Botterford's book you can get from uh, assets101.com, good book on wrapping. And, and she, well, she has two books, one on wrapping, one on solo 401k. So there's two books for you. But within the bounds of the 55,295 sits my note for 33,000 and Chris's note for 14,000. So it's not that you add the 14, the 33, and the five, or the 14 and 33 and the 55. Though if you look at it, don't know what you're looking at, and a lot of closing attorneys miss on this. They think there's three different mortgages, one for 14, one for 33, one for 55. And I'm forever having to sit down if I'm using a, a, an attorney that's not my attorney and explain this is what this is. Fantastic. Uh, that's pretty much all the questions we got for now, so we can keep it on moving to the next deal. Okay, so this is the deal I'm working on right now. Oh, there, okay. Okay, so that's the one I need to be on. So this is the deal that we're working on right now. We're about to do this, we'll close this next week. I was talking to my attorney about this today. So we're gonna call this the Haddock deal because it's in Haddock, Georgia. And so I had a call from a friend of mine and her mom needed to sell roughly is nine and a half acres in Georgia. And so I got the phone call, my friend's in Florida, and I got the phone call because she knows I'm in Georgia and said, you know, well, let me call someone from Georgia. So I got the phone call. And the property is free and clear. Her mother bought it like around 2000, something like that, maybe 1999, and has since paid it all. I know actually she paid cash for it. Her dream was to build a cabin, a log cabin on this 9.5 acres. And unfortunately, because her life got in the way, She's not able to do that. So first her mother moved in because she was terminally ill and she couldn't get to build the cabin. And now her son has a, an illness where he needs to be taken care of now full time. And he's just kind of getting worse as time goes by. So she's decided and the expenses of her son and having to redo, you know, put in ramps and stuff has caused, caused her to spend money. She realizes she'll never be able to build the cabin. So she wanted this property to go away as fast as she could. So she's asking $37,000 for this 9.5 acres. It's in the kind of in the middle of nowhere. And when I looked at this, I thought, okay, you have this lady. She needs $37,000. How do we how do we help her? So let me ask you guys, what would you deal? How, how would you structure this deal? This lady called you. What are, what are some offers? Well, actually, I'm looking at my time, 15 minutes. So I want you to think about that after we're offline, but I'm gonna just keep moving forward and showing you what we did. Okay, Alex, oh, I, I guess I can do this. Did it come up? Nope, let's try to use my key. There it is. So let me show you the structure we came up with. And remember, you heard me talk about, and quote Pete just now, where he talked about the relationship is everything. To me, caring is everything. It goes back to Zig Ziglar. You'll get exactly what you want in life if you just help enough other people get what they want. So to me, that's kind of how I went through life all day long is I go find people to help and I find problems to solve. And that's the nature of my day. So she wanted 37,000. I'm sorry, it was 37 and change, 37, whatever, and change. No, I'm sorry, it was 37,000. And I agreed to pay her 37,000. I did not dick her on the price. And the reason why I didn't dick her is she agreed to accept owner financing. So because she's gonna do owner financing, I'll be happy to pay her price. Now she told me that she would like to have $10,000 down. And one of the lessons that Pete teaches us is the next question you ask is, okay, if I give you the $10,000, what are you gonna do with it? And in this case, in getting her house ready for her son, she had run up credit card charges in the neighborhood of uh, about $22,000. So in hearing that, that changed everything for me. And I said, okay, so if I made a bigger down payment to you, 
that would be better than the ten thousand dollars you could use it to pay off your credit card because that's her goal and she said yes absolutely so instead of offering to give her ten thousand dollars down i up my offer to fifteen thousand dollars down and so that means i'm giving her a note of twenty two thousand dollars and what we agreed to just talking back and forth you know i wanted to go 30 years she wanted to go 10 years so we agreed on 15 years so it's gonna be a 15-year note and i asked her i said well if you put this money in the bank or something like that what what are banks paying right now in their you know for savings and it was like 0.000001 percent which is a fine rate for nobody and i said what if i paid you a lot more than that what if i paid you three percent interest and she thought well, that'd be really good so if you do that out on your financial calculator that's monthly payments of about hundred and fifty dollars per month so i'm going to give her fifteen thousand dollars cash and then hundred fifty dollars a month and what she would like to have happen was a balloon she said i don't want this to go on forever and i said well okay we'll do a balloon but understand balloons are scary things and so i wanted a way to protect myself where five years from now, I don't know where the market's going to be. Is there another China virus you know, among us or what's going on? So I agreed to the five-year balloon, but in me giving her the five-year balloon, she also agreed to give me a two-year um, option to extend the balloon. So that means at the end of the five years, if I choose to, I can add another two years to the balloon. But what I would have to give her in return is $1,000 that's applied toward the principal. So that made this a five-year balloon. It turned it into a seven-year balloon, which gave me leeway. But I want you to understand what my goal is on this deal. As fast as I can, I'm going to pay her off totally. Now, normally, I want to hold this. I don't want to pay it off. But remember, what is it that she's trying to do? She has these credit cards bills, and it's about $22,000. So with the $15,000 $15, I'm giving her down, that takes a big chunk out of it. Then if I can pay off this note quickly to her, she'll have that credit card completely paid off, which greatly improves her life. And so that's how this deal is being structured. But now it comes to the question of I have these 9.5 acres in Georgia, which is just about just east of Macon, that I really don't want. So I'm going to have to do something with this. So this is the second part of it. I plan on selling this property and giving owner financing to do it. So that still lets me stay in control of the property. It still lets me make a monthly check. I still have control of things, but I don't have to take care of the property. And my guess is I'll find somebody who is a right around that area, maybe one of the neighbors. And I go to them and said, how would you like to buy these 9.5 acres next door to you or across the street from you or around the corner from you? And you don't have to go to a bank. I'm gonna make these terms really, really good for you. And my guess is I've done this a lot over my lifetime. I've, <coughs> excuse me, I've structured this type of deal. So the way we're going to do it is I'll sell the property for a good bit more than my purchase price of $37,000. And I'm going to do that and can get that because I'm offering owner financing. So in giving terms, I can set the price a good bit higher than full, than, than fair market value. Because people don't want to go to, the, they can't go to the bank and justify the loan. But if I just say, hey, we can do it this way and you just make me monthly payments, they're all about it. So in, in doing it this way, because I'm going to turn around and sell the property, I'm going to make them, I want them, to, I want to know they'll, they'll take care of the property and they'll make their payments on time. So what I require from them is before I'll do owner financing, they have to lease the property for me for 12 months, be easy to work with make on-time payments. Now, this is something we learned from David Tilney, you know, it'd be easy to work with, make on-time payments, take good care of the property, and then I want to work with them forever. But after 12 months, if they will, if they've done what they promised, then I'm going to agree to sell them the property and I want $15,000 down. As In other words, actually, that's with the lease. I'm going to, I want to get an option consider, uh, purchase consideration of 15000 So I'm putting money into the deal of 15000 This is how I can get it right back. At the end of the 12 months, I'm going to agree to sell the property to them with owner financing. And what I'll ask in return is a 30-year note at 8% interest. So I'll be getting monthly payments based on that. And purchase price will be something above the 37000 And in the note, 
and in the security deed, we use security deeds in Georgia, I'll have a right of first refusal built into it. So if they go to sell it and they're selling it dirt cheap, I have the right to buy it back before anybody else does. So that's the structure. And let's do one more. Oh, I'm sorry, that, that, I went too far. That, that was the last one. So do we have questions on that deal? Yeah, no, uh, we don't have any yet, but I encourage people, I see someone has their hand raised. Uh, fire in the questions. You know, this is uh, the, the great part that we have uh, such a, a wonderfully seasoned mind here for you to uh, to get some good tidbits out of. So uh, please do. My, do, my uh, wife would argue questions. about the wonderfully seasoned and she would say more like dust riddled, cobweb filled. <laughs> well, I guess uh, perspective is 100% of the viewpoint, right? <laughs> right, Alex. Uh, so yeah, I mean, get, get them in there. Um, everything that we have in there was taken care of on the uh, the last one. Again, we do have a hand raised, so uh, do feel free to uh, chime in. Okay, uh, let's see. AJ asks, was there a right of first refusal on the property or the mortgage? Is there a right of first? When when I go to sell it, I will put the right of refusal. I'll build that into the note and into the deed of trust. Great. Uh, and, if I want to, I can, I can, and if I want to, I can add it to the warranty deed too. I can put it all over the place so everybody can see it. Awesome, uh, this is a good one. So can you go over the 15,000 option consideration fee as it related to the 12 month lease? Yeah, so when, let's say, you know, we're buying the property, I do believe next week. And let's say somebody comes to me and says, hey, listen, I want the property. And I tell them, okay, I'm going to sell it with owner financing. Here's how we're going to do it. Number one is I'm going to lease you the property for one year. I'm not going to sell it to you right off because we don't know each other. And I want you to prove to me that you're going to do what you say. So I need you to take good care of the property. I want you to be easy to work with. I want you to make your payments on time. And if you'll do those things for me, at the end of the 12 months, you've proven yourself to me. I'll convert this, give you the deed to the property. It's going to be your home. And we'll do it with owner financing. So it, think of me as a lender in that in that case. So you're gonna you're gonna be it on the property. Now, when you go to lease the property for the year, I'm also gonna give you the option to purchase it at the end of the 12 months. And they're gonna give me a consideration. In other words, the 15,000 is the consideration for me giving them an option to buy the property. Remember the boat? I gave the guy a boat and in return, he gave me an option to buy his house at one point in the future. This is just me and the other driver in the other seat saying, okay, you give me 15,000 and I'll give you the right to buy my house in the future. And that 15,000 will be applied 100% toward the purchase price and the monthly payments that you make will be applied toward the purchase price. Awesome, uh, let's see. Uh... Why would you want the property back? I don't want the property back, but let's say the property, for whatever reason, when this person goes to sell it, is worth $150,000. And they're going to sell it to their aunt down the street for $15,000. So you see all the equity in the deal now. Now, I don't want the property, but if they're going to lowball it out, then might I step in and say, well, let me buy the property for $15,000, and then I'll turn around and sell it for the $150,000. I want to have that ability to do that. Doesn't say I will, but I want to have the ability to do that. Awesome. Let's see. What if the land buyer is difficult to work with? What happens to the fifteen thousand dollar consideration? Would you wouldn't keep the fifteen k? Would you? No, Question I would mark. not. No, I would not. Because I, again, it's just not how I do my business. So as I'm going into a deal, I want to be a porcupine. So I'm, I don't want to be a bear, you know, piece of what, you, what do you want to be? What, what, what is your animal personality? I don't want to be a bear or a tiger or an alligator. I want to be a porcupine. Porcupines are slow. They're not real bright. They don't see very well, but nobody messes with a porcupine. And so when I'm going into a deal, I'm going to go at it from the point of view, whether it's a lease, any type of paper, any deal I'm doing with someone, I'm going to protect myself so in case the relationship goes bad, especially with someone I don't know, I'm going to make sure that I have all the quills built into that deal. It doesn't mean I have to use the quills. It means I can use the quills. 
And often has been the case that when it came time for me to exercise an option or to do a lead or whatever it is, that I've, I've amended the agreement and got rid of the quills because the person's easy to work with. So going back to the question, what would I do if the person I'm working with becomes a jerk? Well, I, I have I have a way of protecting myself in all my paperwork. So another reason, one of the things to learn is when you're doing deals, the first thing that I'm always working on is the accord. The accord is the agreement. So usually that involves a legal pad and often for me, uh, something called a T-bar. And I'm just figuring out what everybody needs. Now, once we have an agreement, then we, in other words, the court is reached, then I want to memorialize it with paperwork. So my paperwork is crafted for that particular deal. And what it needs to do is it needs to follow the tracks of what we agree to. Uh, I've heard Pete say this a bunch. Don't let your paperwork uh, betray what you agreed to. And I think that was a very good lesson on how I do my paperwork. So I protect myself with the with the quills. Doesn't mean I'm going to use them, but it means I can use them. Very good analogy. Uh, so we don't have any other particular questions right now. Please keep in mind that uh, if you want to get your questions answered, now is the time to do it. We are running up uh, on the end of this uh, presentation, so uh, please uh, get those in there. But uh, Bill, why don't you go ahead and plug the uh, the what box course that you have coming up? Yeah. Yeah, I want to finish up with this because, again, I told you guys I had really good teachers in Jack Miller and Pete Fortunato and Dyke Spotiford. You can add in David Tilney. You can add in Gary Johnson. I've, I've just had some really good teachers in my life, and I, and I still go to them. You know, Pete's teaching in Columbus, Ohio next Saturday and Sunday. I'm, I'm flying in for it, and I've, I've been taking almost every class Pete ever teaches, every time he teaches it, wherever he teaches it, because I'm still learning the language of Fortunato. And I've been doing that since 1999. And I do that with dykes. So these are just really good people to go learn from. But with that said, with what box, that's a course that Pete and I teach together. And um, he and I started teaching this a number of years ago. And between the two of us, we have 86 years worth of deal making experience with Pete having 55 or 56 of those years. So to just to be in the class with that kind of knowledge and experience is worth it. So the class will be on September 18th and 19th. 2021 is going to be down in Tampa, Florida, and people have asked me, you know, is this going to be a Zoom meeting? Can you can you record it? And the answer is no. In the stuff we cover during this class, this is probably one of the most sophisticated and advanced creative deal structuring classes you can take. And we want to have people there. We want to make sure they understand what we're talking about. And as Pete says, that investing is a relationship business, and relationships are are best done face to face. But anyway, to see the videos on what box and what it's about, please go to their website at billingkipcook.com. And my wife just handed me a piece of paper that said uh, there's a special price on what box for everybody on the call. Um, it's only $4.97. So it's $100 off the $5.97 early bird special. So and the, and the uh, password to get the, early, the, the $4.97 price is cake, C-A-K-E, cake, because it's my wife's birthday at that point in time when we do what box awesome and that special and is only for and that special is only for 24 hours that's it great i uh just just to add on to that i have uh been to uh this course in the past uh, one of the first ones they did and uh, just just speaking personally not necessarily as a representative of Anna, i i encourage people if you're looking to get more information uh, if you're starting out it is a wealth of knowledge not only from the people that you uh, here being Pete and and Bill, but the other people in the room too. Uh, some of the conversations you can have with uh, other people who have you know equal amounts of experiences. These two is uh, almost just as valuable. So if you're considering going, if you're in the Tampa Bay area, um, you know, speaking from someone who has been before, I, I would highly encourage it. Yeah, and, and again, just having Pete there wherever Pete teaches. I don't care if you come to What Box or another one. And so you know, What Box. To me, it's really not for someone who's brand new. This is for someone who understands how to do a subject to deal, who understands how to use trust and stuff like that. This is a very advanced course. So we've rewritten what box for this year. I know Pete right now is rolling his eyes and saying everybody should be there. And when give you, to give you an example of this is when I first started, got into investing, 
um, I joined Georgia Rhea, and they had a full-timer uh, subgroup. And I went to this full-timer subgroup, and the guy looked at me and said, you know, Bill, he said, I'd love to have you here, but you, uh, we got to just double check. He said, only full-time investors are allowed to be here. Are you a full-time investor? And I was not. And I lied through my damn teeth to get in that meeting because I knew I needed to learn the language. And maybe, and I didn't, I didn't understand a lot of what they talked about, but it's how you learn the language. So I'm learning Spanish with Duolingo, but I really won't learn the language by just being on this course. I'm going to have to go down to you know Mexico and spend some time there and develop the skill of Spanish. So with what box? Come develop your skill of creative deal structuring. Awesome. And uh, we have a question here. Uh, if uh, what's the pricing for like uh, spouses? Um, is there is there a deal for like husband and wife or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, uh, we do. Uh, who, the 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 spouse is spouse business partner. 450. So the normal price of this is 597. Um, I think on uh, August in August we lose the early bird special. It goes up to 697. So you go to the website, you'll see when the early bird special ends. But anyway, so you can bring someone else for 450. Awesome, great. And by, and by the way, this this course comes with a money back guarantee. So at the end of the class, if you sit back and say that wasn't worth my time and effort, because Peter and I, Pete and I are not here to waste people's times. We're too old for that. But if you sit back and say, was it worth my time and effort? We'll gladly refund your money. No questions asked. Keep the book. Yeah, absolutely. Um, any more specific questions on uh, deals? Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of people asking uh, questions on the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the pricing and stuff like that. I would encourage you to go to their website. Uh, it breaks down right yeah, there, go, uh, or you can reach out right there. Yeah, go to the website. That's the, that's the easiest way to explain it, billingkimcook.com, and you'll get what you need, and there's videos there explaining where did the name what box come from because it came from Pete. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I just would like to like really reserve the last few moments that we have here for anyone that has any other deal questions uh, they want to get out there because uh, we uh, we filled up the hour, so I just want to make sure that we get everyone's questions on the deals answered so we can make sure that you get the good value out of your time here this afternoon. Um, let me just uh, advance the slides so that anyone on here, if you want to screen grab uh, contact information for either myself or Bill, you can do so. Uh, but it, again, we'll hang on for another second or two to see if there's any other questions on the deals. And Alex, I want to thank you also again for you to take time out of your day and uh, to hold my hand through this, which sounds weird. But anyway, to hold my hand through this, I greatly appreciate you, Alex. No, my pleasure. Thank you very much for being a part of this. We always uh, are very grateful for people that uh, take time out of their day as well to come and bring uh, great information to all the people that, uh, you know, register for our stuff. So I uh, thank you very much for putting on a great presentation. Um, all right, looks like we have people uh, filtering off. I guess we'll go ahead and uh, end it up there. Uh, people are just uh, starting to sign off, I see. Uh, again, Bill, thank you very much. Uh, again, if anyone has any questions for Bill, his information is up on there. If you want to attend the What Box seminar, you can go to billandkimcook.com to register there, and they'll have all the information on it. And the discount code for people on this call that's good for 24 hours is CAKE, C-A-K-E. <laughs> so if you're going to use that, uh, it's easy enough to remember. So uh, again, thank you very much, Bill. Do you have any uh, final thoughts that you want to share with people before we uh, wrap this up? Yeah, today, you know, the day's not all the way over. Go out and stop and talk to one seller. All you have to do is ask one question. You know, you don't have to do a deal and write up the contract, but stop somewhere that where you see a for sale sign and talk to one seller. And all you got to do is ask one question. One question only. It's Pete's famous question, which is, why would you sell such a nice house like this? Learn to talk to folks. Start there and then care. Fantastic. Well, again, thank you very much. That's a good note to end on. Hope everyone had a great time on this presentation. Uh, if you have any other questions, again, contact information up on there and have a great rest of your day, everyone. Y'all take care.